You're listening to the Dental Zone podcast. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall. This is the place that supports you to understand your dental issues, the causes and how to prevent them, empowering each individual to get the most out of life while bearing a stunning smile. Hello and welcome to the Dental Zone podcast. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall, holistic dentist from Brisbane, Australia, and this podcast is about oral health and the mouth-body connection. It's about all things holistic dentistry and how to care for your teeth and gums so that you can have a healthy mouth and a healthy life. If you'd like to know more, you can hop on over to holisticdentistry.au or evolvedental.com.au and you can give my clinic a call 0737 201811 if you'd like to book an appointment and have me take care of your dental health. Well, I've just mentioned mouth-body connection and it's something that holistic dentistry talks a lot about and a lot of our premise of what goes on in the mouth affects the rest of your body is what we talk about in this mouth-body connection. There's also the feedback loop of what goes on in your body will affect your mouth and vice versa. So today I'm going to talk about what is this mouth-body connection? Why is it so important? And then you'll have a better understanding of why taking care of your teeth, your gums and your oral health is so important for your overall health and well-being. So let's get to it. Let's get in the zone and talk about mouth-body connection. Now, your body is designed to protect itself from the spread and invasion of bacteria, viruses, parasites, and toxins that help to defend your body from illness and disease. There are systems in our body that are responsible for what we call biofeedback and homeostasis, which is the balance of the body, the workings of the hormones, chemical distribution, metabolism, energy production, fighting of disease, and the balance of the immune system. And just like your skin, acts like a a physical barrier. There's also the blood-brain barrier that protects the brain from toxins in the blood. And so too is there a barrier between the gums and teeth and the rest of your body. So I know when you think about getting healthy, what do you think about? You think about, I've got to get fit, I've got to exercise more, I've got to get fresh air, probably need to change my diet, drink more water. Um, Really, we don't think of our oral health first or at all in a lot of instances. You don't think, oh, I've got to get healthier. I need to brush and floss more. I mean, come on, let's face it. Most of us think about our teeth the way, same way we think about our nails or our hair. They're just something that's there to be made pretty, to be kept clean. I mean, just look at all the um, <clears throat> teeth whitening adverts and teeth whitening products and this trend in teeth whitening. And we don't place the importance on dental health that we do on our medical health. But your oral health has effects on every other system in the body. And because of that connection, it's really important to know how to optimize your oral health and to protect that mouth-body connection. You know, something just as simple as a cavity, you know, having decay in your tooth, that is connected to your heart health, your microbiome, and even your brain health. Your teeth are precious organs. They're not dead things. They are critical to the proper functioning of the whole body. And what happens in your mouth happens in the rest of the body. And what is going on in your mouth can be a marker and an indication of what's going on in the body. So as I've mentioned, just like you've got that blood-brain barrier, just like you have skin, 
then there is a barrier between the gums and the teeth and the rest of the body. Now, this barrier will break down every time there is inflammation or infection in the mouth, and this triggers disease and dysfunction in other parts of the body. The mouth is the only place in the body where bone-like structures protrude beyond the skin. Imagine how hard it would be to prevent infection if you had a bone sticking out of your leg or your arm, for example. Now, 60 cent, sorry, if 60% of the population had heart disease or diabetes, and for God's sake, we're getting close to those figures, and yet we're still not addressing fundamental lifestyle issues that can prevent type 2 diabetes so easily, for example. But let's imagine that we hit a point where we said, you know, 60%, 65% of the population have diabetes. Would we call that unacceptable? I hope that we would. But sadly, what I'm seeing more and more is we are trivializing a serious disease like diabetes as though it's normal to be diabetic, that it's inevitable that you're going to be diabetic because you get older. To me, that is unacceptable. 1% of the population with type 2 diabetes is, unpo is unacceptable. But then if we apply this to dental health, 60% <clears throat> or more of the population has gum disease, an illness that creates infection, creates inflammation and triggers illness and disease throughout the rest of your body. And yet we do not take this condition anywhere near seriously as we should do. Your oral health has a knock-on effect to virtually every other system in the body. So we need to look at how that connection, what that is, and how to optimize your own mouth-body connection. So let's define this. Let's give this a little bit of something that you can get your head around and look at how does stuff that's going on in the teeth of gum and your gums, how does what's going on there go to other parts of the body? Well, around each tooth, there's like a collar of fibers that pulls the gums snugly in around the neck of the tooth. This tight seal is designed to keep bacteria, toxins, food particles, inflammatory products, white blood cells from your mouth. These are this little collar or cuff around the tooth is designed to keep elements out. If they were able to pass, they go um, directly into the systemic tissues from the mouth. The immune system would really have its hands full if this was going on constantly. In a healthy mouth with no infection, that seal that is tight and the pathway between the mouth bacteria and, blood, and the bloodstream is closed. When there's infection in the gums, that seal is weakened and elements from the outside, bacteria and toxins, get past the gums and go into your bloodstream. And you go, well, it's no big deal. My gums are just these little things around my teeth. Well, if you've got inflammation of your gums, that would be equivalent to the size of a sheet of A4 paper. Now, if you held a piece of A4 paper against your body, that's pretty much your whole torso. If your whole chest and upper body and stomach were inflamed and bleeding, you would be seriously worried. But because it's going on in your mouth, for some reason we think we can ignore that. But your mouth is designed to create a seal from the outside world, the bacteria that are present in your mouth, it's designed not to get into your body. Now, when you've got an infection, that seal is weakened and everything is going into your gums and straight into your bloodstream. bloodstream. When something breaks this seal, it's serious business. It's like breaking the skin. If you've got a wound in your skin, 
You've got a breach in your skin and things from the outside world get in the body. Things like bacteria, dirt, viruses, like tetanus, for example. And that wound can become um, infected. It can poison you. You can get blood poisoning from a tiny little scratch on the back of your hand. So just imagine that things from the outside world are getting in your body, spreading and infecting all other systems by way of the bloodstream. We know if we cut our hand, we need to keep it clean and we need to help it to heal. Yet when your gums are bleeding, your gums have a cut, not like an incision, but they are raw and you have an open wound And you have billions of bacteria, yeasts and nasties and parasites inside your mouth that are now going directly into your bloodstream. If your gums bleed, that is a sign something is wrong. Now, once past that um, collar or cuff, the bacteria get into the rest of the body. So you get infection. So you get bacteria from the mouth that travel in the bloodstream to virtually any other site in the body. Think of your bloodstream as like the roadway, the highway that transports the bacteria from one place to another. And then these bacteria go and go, there's a nice rest stop. There's a nice roadside cafe that I can stop at. And I'm just going to have a break and I'm going to drop off here and I'm going to infect your heart. I'm going to infect your brain and I'm going to call problems elsewhere. Now, what happens? So you get infection that travels around the bloodstream. You get injury. Bacteria in the blood often turn into something else like proteins or exotoxins that can injure, injure your bodily tissues permanently. You get inflammation. Bacteria get into the bloodstream and the body responds to this invasion with an immune response that can raise your body temperature. It produces an inflammatory reaction. Now, if you have gum disease, bacteria are constantly getting into the blood and constantly causing inflammation. Since we age and die of inflammatory diseases, it's critical to minimize chronic inflammatory responses in the body. If you've got chronic inflammation, that is causing immense damage to you and your health. It is shortening your lifespan and it's putting you at risk of other inflammatory diseases. And these diseases that can be caused by or complicated by oral infections like gum disease are things like irritable bowel syndrome, Alzheimer's and dementia, types of cancer like breast, prostate, pancreatic cancers, um, diabetes is affected by gum infection, weight gain, cardiovascular disease like heart attack, stroke, infective endocarditis, which is where um, bacteria uh, overwhelm the heart, and you can get thickening of the arteries and um, increased blood pressure as well. Uh, Complications of oral infections like gum disease are linked to low birth weight, premature birth, difficulty actually conceiving and infertility. You can get bacterial pneumonia because you inhale the bacteria into your lungs. Um, The inflammations linked to things like osteoporosis and rheumatoid arthritis. So taking care of your oral health, a great starting point is brushing and flossing because that's going to help prevent the breakdown of that collar, that cuff that sits around the tooth. Avoiding infection means that that collar stays tight and the ability for bacteria and the pathway to the rest of the body, that gate stays shut. So you need to be brushing and flossing after meals, after every meal, so that you get bits of food out and plaque bacteria don't have chance to breed and multiply and cause damage. Okay, but if you can't brush in between meals and you're only doing morning and night, then you can rinse with water, you can rinse with hydrogen peroxide, 
Um, and there are little brushes that you can just carry in your bag or your wallet that you can quickly have a clean around with. You want to eat fo- foods that pr- promote rehardening of your tooth enamel, where, which is called remineralization. And this is a natural process whereby teeth resist cavities. And so you want to eat things that are high in minerals and high in nutrients, low in sugar and low in uh, acidity. You want to see your dentist regularly so that we can catch any signs of oral disease in its earliest phases because your gums and gum disease can't get better. It can only be arrested and stopped in its current state and seeing your dentist is one of the best forms of prevention. You need to include superfoods in your diet. If you're pregnant, then you need to really ensure that your oral hygiene is top class because you're more prone to gum disease because of the changes in your hormones. And you need to make sure you can clean all your teeth in your mouth properly. So if you have impacted and twisted wisdom teeth, you're going to find they're harder to keep clean. They're going to have chronic inflammation, chronic infection, and cause a higher rate of disease. Areas of crowding where your teeth overlapped, they're much harder to keep clean. So getting your teeth straightened may be an option. Now, your teeth have a lot more to do with your overall health than you think. And the mouth and your body are connected. So making better oral health decisions is super important. So when you think about, hey, I want to get healthy, then you want to look at looking after your teeth. So what are some foods that help with remineralization? Well, in talking like nuts and seeds, we're talking things that are high in minerals. So those are super important for you. But you can also look at things like wild salmon, that's got lots of calcium in, uh, xylitol, um, green tea. And, you know, you, you like to think, oh, dentists don't eat sugar and candy and blood, don't drink Coca-Cola. And it's just not true. Um, but there are, are foods that you can eat to look after your teeth. Um, apparently dark chocolate Um, It has to be they're not sugar-laden stuff. You can look at cheese. I'm not a big dairy fan. I'm not a big chocolate fan. Um, You know, those sort of things. Wild salmon has a lot of calcium. Green leafy vegetables also have a lot of calcium. Um, Oranges are citrus, but and they're acidic, which is not great for your teeth. But things like vitamin C can help strengthen your blood vessels, improve your connective tissue. Um, there, I would also recommend collagen, maybe collagen supplements. You need to be drinking lots of water so that you're not dehydrated because your saliva actually helps neutralize bacterial acid and helps prevent tooth decay. It also prevents bad breath. Um, So it's important to stay well hydrated. You want to have fruits and vegetables, high fiber fruits. Their fiber content actually helps clean your teeth. It helps remove other bits of food and plaque. Um, It helps prevent that plaque buildup. So you want to have high water content, crunchy, juicy fruits and vegetables. Xylitol, that helps to prevent tooth decay. Um, it has compounds in it which kill tooth decay causing bacteria. It's a sweetener that you'll find in many sugarless gums and chewing gum helps increase your saliva production. I don't recommend chewing gum if you've still got amalgam fillings though because that means you're going to be producing more mercury vapor release. Then you've got your green and your black teas, preferably no caffeine guys. They have polyphenols in which interact with the bacteria that cause plaque by killing or suppressing them. And the bacteria feed on the sugars in their mouth. And once they've had their feast, they excrete tooth enamel destroying acids. And those bacteria also cause inflammation and infection in your gums. So those polyphenols have cavity fighting properties. Um, Some teas contain naturally occurring fluoride. And that can actually help support to make a difference for your teeth and gums because it's not the nasty stuff that does harm to the rest of your body. You can also use then toothpaste that contain hydroxyapatite um, and those are the building blocks of 
your teeth and bones. Now, if you're pregnant, you got to make sure that you really look after your oral health because gingivitis impacts pregnancy, the change in hormones are elevated during a woman's pregnancy, and these make the gums more likely to overreact to even the smallest amounts of plaque bacteria. Um, usually women notice that their gums get redder and puffier, their gums are more tender to touch, and they bleed more easily. You can end up with some um, infections because your immune system is lowered down, and there have been studies that shows that the oral disease of the pregnant mum, woman, and expecting mothers can be um, it can impact on weight gain in the baby, so it can also end up with um, early um, birth as well. So you want to get a clean bill of health. You want to brush and floss. You want to make sure you get your regular dental visits. You want to watch out for bleeding gums because that can be a sign of problems. And you want to take those things quite seriously. So bleeding gums are a red alert. When you see blood in the sink, when you spit out after you've brushed and flossed, hopefully you are flossing, then that is a sign that you have gum disease. That is a sign that that barrier between the mouth and the rest of your body is getting breached and you have inflammation and infection traveling around your bloodstream, which is increasing your likelihood of things like cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, stroke, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's disease, cancers, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and the list goes on and on. You need to take that seriously. If you're serious about living healthily and having a long and healthy life, then you need to make sure you look after that mouth-body connection, that you look after your oral health, and you take care of your teeth and gums. Now, you can go back and you can listen to other episodes that talk about this mouth-body connection. I um, go on in detail about how to care for your oral health, what are the best ways to do that, how you can optimize that, um, how you can look after your microbiome with diet and probiotics, how you can eliminate dental toxins by not using fluoride and addressing having amalgam fillings in your teeth. It's all there for you. So the next time you think about, hey, I'd like to take care of my health, then think teeth think gums, and think oral hygiene. Thank you so much for joining me. This is The Dental Zone. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall, holistic dentist. You can give us a call on 0737201811 if you'd like to make an appointment. You can check us out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts. Please like, share. If you're on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. Hop on over to evolvedental.com.au and Till next time, stay in the zone. You've been listening to the Dental Zone podcast with Dr. Rachel Hall. For health, lifestyle, fitness, and a great smile, get in the zone.